Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen and I want to welcome you back to another edition of your Adrenal Fix. Today I'm going to talk to you about adrenal gland dysfunction, chronic fatigue, being exhausted all the time, and the relationship that has to do with your gut and gut inflammation. A lot of my patients always ask me, hey doc, what's a good supplement for um, adrenal fatigue? What adaptogens should I go on? What hormones should I use? And I always tell them, let's get to the cause of the problem because then if we look at the cause and figure out why you are getting con uncontrolled inflammation, then we can try to halt that process and get to the actual cause of the problem. So today I wanted to talk to you about a couple terms you probably have never heard of and need to know about because if you're still suffering, you haven't addressed these. The first term is something called hypochloridria and the majority of the patients that I consult with have this and have no idea what it is and basically what it means is you're not secreting enough stomach acid and because you're not secreting enough stomach acid as you get older you lose the ability to disinfect your food by secreting juices on it like hydrochloric acid, betaine and also digestive enzymes and even bioformation. So the food sits there and it ferments and it rots and it creates a lot of inflammation and that causes adrenal gland dysfunction. So I wanted to talk to you about what I know about the methylation cycle and what I know about blood work and how we can look at diagnosing and understanding that you may have an adrenal gland problem based on your inability to secrete enough stomach acid and one of the major reasons why that would happen. So, all right, the first thing I would tell patients is typically if we're not secreting enough stomach acid, then we are not going to be able to absorb B12. And if we're not able to absorb B12, then we could tend to develop a macrocytic anemia where your red blood cells and your hemoglobin and your hematocrit is, is lower than it should should be not necessarily from a lab range but from a healthy range and then what happens is your red blood cells the size the concentration gets bigger they aren't able to mature and get smaller but that may be missed based on looking at a laboratory range for blood work so what I wanted to tell you is this for female ranges we tend to look at MCV, MCH, and MCHC. And we look at it from a point of view as how big are the red blood cells so that we can get an idea how well you're maturing them. And the lab ranges are for MCV, it is 79 to 97. So if you're 98, or you're 78, you're told you're high or you're low. However, from a healthy range, it's 92. So a lot of the times I'll have a patient who's 93 or higher, and we know that they're not maturing their red blood cells well, and that could be a B12 problem, or it could be hypochloridria, not secreting enough stomach acid. We also look at the MCHC, and on the high end, it's 35.7 and 36. So that's not a huge difference. And then we have MCH, and it's about 30. So the big one is MCVs. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about is looking at your folate cycle. And a lot of the times, we'll see a lot of people that have over a 1,000 in their B12 levels. I just saw someone the other day at over 2,000. And many doctors will conclude, well, there's no way you can have a B12 deficiency because you're so high. But the problem is, is that's measuring your serum B12 levels and not your red blood cells or even your white blood cells blood cells level and how much is actually penetrating into the cell. So a lot of the time when we do a serum test and we see it's so high, we don't discern whether that's oxidized B12 or it's reduced B12, meaning it's available for use. And the majority of the time, if you're that high in, T in, in B12, then you have a blockage of your enzymes and you're not able to get that into the cell and be used for energy production. So how does this have to do with gut inflammation? Good question. Let's say we have an H. pylori infection. If we have an H. pylori infection, then chances are our neutrophils are going to be very high. And a lot of the times I see patients whose neutrophils are greater than 60%. In fact, when you look at the lab ranges, it doesn't even give you a, a range of where it should be. But typically, it's going to be greater. So I see a lot of patients that have a 70% neutrophilic breakdown. And that's a concern because we know based on that, there's an overgrowth of unhealthy bacteria, H. pylori being an unhealthy bacteria. So let's say we have high neutrophils, and then we see that we are not digesting our foods optimally, then maybe we're going to start to see our red blood cells be deficient in B12 and they're not maturing and then potentially we're going to have 
high B12. And then potentially we're going to have adrenal problems. So the cause of the problem is typically a gut bacteria overgrowth. And because that's causing uncontrolled inflammation, it's draining the adrenal glands all day long. So until you actually get to the cause, you're not going to fix the problem. And I will agree with a lot of Facebook posts that said that it's not just a bacteria infection. Of course, it's a lot of the times co-infection. So you could have parasites, you can have viruses, you can have Lyme, you can have pesticides, you can have so many things. But the fact is, is if you have an overgrowth of bacteria, it could pot potentially be dominating the expression. And that's something that you can go after first. So anyways, I wanted to tell you about an upcoming uh, webinar that we're hosting um, for free. Um, you can click on the link below this uh, YouTube page and, and you can opt in for free and we are going to go over in depth more of what we're talking about and how you would overcome this. Uh, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an adrenal fatigue recovery ninja and if you liked what you heard please subscribe to my channel make sure you share it or you like it go over and see me on Facebook at Adrenal Fatigue Society and make sure you check out my blog at adrenalfatiguesociety.com my name is Dr. Joel Rosen and I look forward to helping you recover with your adrenal fatigue nightmare thank you so much